A lesson for May 22nd, 2016. Lesson 12. We're continuing to come out of Unit 3, which is titled Fullness of Faith. Our lesson title is Being Open and Receptive to Life. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9. And our background scripture is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 15 through 17, and also from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. And our printed text is from Luke, chapter 18, verses 15 through 17, and also the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 16. Our key verse, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as little children shall not enter in no wise therein. Luke 18 and 17. Our lesson aim as a result of studying this lesson that the students should be able to know that Jesus valued children so highly that they were his models for kingdom possessors. Point two, that that they still need to, to believe that the best quality of children are the very ones that they should seek to cultivate in themselves and also to commit to self-examination and improvement with childlike faith. Being open and receptive to life. This lesson that we have today can be found also in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark. And it follows after the parable of the publican and the Pharisees praying in the temple. Many of us know the story how that Jesus gave the parable that how that it was a publican and the Pharisees that was praying in the, in the temple and how that the publican he was in such a humble state that he refused to even look up towards heaven, but he was bowed down on his face and he cried out, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. But then the contrast was that of the Pharisees where he stood and that how that in in his self-pride and arrogance, how he just said that he thanked God that he was not like others and that he bragged about the so-called work that he did, how that he tied, and how that he kept himself. And so Jesus was using this as a contrast and saying, now, which one do you think that the Father in heaven heard? The, the one who came in humility or the one who came in self-pride? So now we have the story here where Jesus go to, to, to illustrate that parable even further it says that the truth that was illustrated by that parable, that those shall be accepted with God and honor who humble themselves. So we find in verse 1 of our lesson, it states, And they brought unto him also infants, that he should touch them. That is, that the people that followed Jesus, his followers, that the parents or, or the keepers are there brought unto him their children, their infants, little children that that they should, Jesus should touch them. The parents or whoever they were who had care, to, care of these children brought to them to him that he should touch them in the token of his commanding and conferring a blessing upon them as children. Now, we have to understand that it does not appear that these children needed any healing from sickness, but that they who cared for them was mostly concerned about their souls, which ought to be the principle 
concern and care of all parents for their children. It is nice and it is wonderful that we have a desire that our children should should grow and be physically healthy, that that they should get educated and that they be able to provide economically a, a way of life for themselves. But it is more important that we should be concerned all though all those are good things, but we should be concerned about their eternal soul. And so and so that we need to bring our children, we need to teach our children about the necessity of having God in their life. We find in the Old Testament where David gave instruction to his son Solomon in 1 Chronicles 28 and 9 saying, My son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your fathers and serve him with with wholehearted devotion and with a million and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forever reject you. We also told in Proverbs 22 and 6, where it states, Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. We find in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, where it tells us, Father, do not aggravate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training, the admiration, and the instruction of the Lord. Look at our society today. Look at our young people. Look at our children. We as parents, as a whole, we have not done our job. Oh, yeah, we might have supplied them with 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 uh, uh, all the material things that they might want xboxes iphones uh, uh, uh nike tennis or, or whatever the uh, 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 the newest fad but but we have not taught them or brought them to the lord so that so so that so that their inner man can be instructed not the outer man but just look around See, we have a responsibility is that we need to bring our children to the Lord so so that God may touch their hearts and raise them up. And then not only for us to bring them to the Lord, but we ourselves need to come to the Lord and to give our life to him so that we can do what? That we can be an example. A lot of times our children don't want no part of what we so-called claim our religion because what we do speaks louder than what we say. That that they see us. They see our actions more so than they see the words that we speak. But we have a responsibility to want to have our children blessed by God. For those who are blessed in Christ and those who are saved in Christ, we should desire for the salvation of our children also. And that the true love that we as parents that we can have for our children is by bringing them to Christ. Getting them to know God that what? That he might touch their hearts it is only god is the only one that is is able to to change the, the hearts of man though though we might desire to but he's the one that has the the power so it is our responsibility to seek the salvation for our children it is our responsibility to teach them about 
God to teach them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if, because the world is out there already teaching them the things that they do not need to know. The world is already out there teaching them, trying to counteract the things that are being taught, if anything is being taught to them in the home. So, so we see that that these people that they desire, they desired the Lord's blessing upon their children. It was the custom to bring children to to the prophets and, 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 and to the pious people that he might touch them and that he would invoke a blessing upon their life. It is not so much that we always want the physical uh, 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 blessings and, 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 the, and, and the physical healing, but we need God's presence in, in providence in the life of ourselves and, and our children. And so we find also in this verse 15 where it says that, that, but when his disciples saw it, they rebuked him. You know, as I said earlier, it was customary among the Jews when blessings were sought for others in prayer to lay hands on the heads of the person prayed for, implying in a kind of concentration unto God. So we see that the disciples rebuked them. That is, that they told those people that was bringing those children that it was improper. This they did either because they thought that the children was too young or because they thought that they would be troublesome, it would be a problem, it would be a bother unto Jesus. But see, we should never, we should never in interfere with someone who's trying to seek the blessings of the Lord. We should never be so impatient as to hinder someone not to have time to stop and to give them our attention for those that seek the blessings of the Lord. Jesus said in verse 16 of our lesson, he says, But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Suffer little children to come unto me. That is, to, to permit little children to come unto me. In doing, saying this, and in doing it, Jesus, he, he showed his humility that he was not uh, too high above anything to take notice of anyone. Many of the accusations that the so-called religious folks, the 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 uh, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the and the Sanhedrin council took about Jesus, is that is that he associated with the so-called low life. You know, the aristocrats they say, look at him. If he, if he was a prophet, he would know what type of person that this is but how can he be a prophet where 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 he is associating with the, with the low class with the publicans and sinners so but jesus let it be known that 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 though he was god manifested in the faith that he was not too high to stoop low to be among and to encourage the lowest of mankind and so jesus took notice of them and, and, and he said and that, and by doing this, he did this to teach his disciples, which is also is to, to teach us to regard the weakest, the weakest and the lowest of people. And that even that some of our brothers and sisters in Christ, that they are what? That they are weak believers and some are just like children in knowledge so we should have patience with them and not hinder them either by word or by a bad example 
we should suffer them, permit them to come, and then have the patience to help them. Because none of us was born into this world with knowledge. The knowledge, if we have any, it was taught to us by someone. That goes for secular knowledge and even biblical knowledge. That someone took the time to instruct us so that we might learn and understand those things that pertain unto God. And so he gave them an example. He said, suffer, permit, endure little children to come unto him. And so, and so by doing this, he used the little child as an example is that we as adults who are seeking the will of God, that this needs to be our attitude, that, that, that we should be as little children. So we find it in verse he, he goes on to say that suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. You know, and, and so to receive the kingdom of God, we have to receive it as little children. Okay, now understand this, that the kingdom of God although it's used in many cases synonymous with the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is at times viewed as everlasting and universal. It is the rule of sovereign God over all creatures and things. In this sense, the kingdom of God includes the kingdom of heaven. Now, we have to understand and don't get confused that the kingdom of heaven is only found in the book of Matthew, where, where the king, where Jesus were presented to the Jews as the king of the Jews. And that the kingdom of heaven was, a, was, was to be set upon by an earthly king, which, who would be the son of the seed of David, which was the Lord Jesus Christ, and that and that the Jews, they rejected their king. So now understand, but one day the kingdom of heaven will be physically set up, and it will be within the spirit of the kingdom of God. And so in the spirit of the kingdom of God includes the kingdom of heaven. The 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 kingdom of God is also used to designate the spirit of salvation. The, the, the spirit of salvation entered only by the new birth. The Gospel of John, the third chapter, verses 5 through 7 states, Jesus answered, talking to Nicodemus, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised. You must be born again. Born of the Spirit as the children of God. John 1, 12 says, speaking of Jesus, says, Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human desire or will, but born of God. So therefore, to enter into the kingdom of God as a child of God, therefore, we should have the disposition, the disposition, the nature of children. That is that we need to be mindful that to receive this salvation and the benefit of it with humility and thankfulness. For, for, for it was God who was rich in mercy, 
with his great love with, with, with which he loved us, that, that he saved us even when we was dead in trespasses and sin. That we need to realize that 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 Jesus who knew no sin, but 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 God made him a sin offering for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that of ourselves we didn't have no righteousness whatsoever. All our righteousness about us, the un, the unsaved man, the unregenerated man, the best of the moral men, all our righteousness is as a filthy rag in the sight of God. And so we need to be mindful that, that we need to be mindful that that our salvation is it is a gift for God that that we didn't deserve it that that God gave us mercy instead of giving us what we deserve for we all have sinned and the wages of sin is death but God who is rich in mercy he gave us grace he gave us unmerited favor that he gave us salvation through his son Jesus Christ, that God loved us so much that he demonstrated his love towards us that while we was yet sinners, then none of us clean ourselves up, but while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so we need to have that type of attitude, knowing and realizing that it is not of ourselves, that we didn't save ourselves, that 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 we did we can't keep ourselves that if it wasn't for God that the sun wouldn't shine that if it wasn't for for for, for God that that he wouldn't send the rain to 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 refresh the earth to make the crops grow that if it wasn't for God that we cannot keep ourselves so we need to have a a childlike attitude knowing that we are dependent upon God not for some things but but for all things and then and not only being dependent upon him but being thankful for the things that that he has done for us being thankful for the things that he will do for us and that we should in our gratitude just realize that 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 we are not worthy that is why I like First Timothy uh, 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 one fifteen, where it said that this is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners, of whom I am the chief. That we should have a childlike attitude, realizing that 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 there is no boasting whatsoever that we can do, but we just have to trust God. We as a child trusts his parents. We have to trust God as the child is dependent upon his parents for everything to that we have to be dependent upon God. And then also as an obedient child that we need to learn how to obey the will of our Father. And then also, as a child, that we need to do what? We need to, to desire the sincere milk of the word that we might grow. One of the things that a child desires is for his parents, not only to love him, to provide for them, but also to be proud of them, to, to please their parents. And so we... With an attitude and the disposition of a child as children of God, it should be our de desire to please him, to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so we should come with an attitude of humility and thankfulness, not pretending to merit or earn or deserve God's favor, God's salvation, God's goodness, God's mercy, God's love as the Pharisee did. But but gladly owning that we are indebted, a debt that we could 
never pay the favor that we we did not deserve and indebted to the grace of God just as the publican did. Not even looking up to heaven, but he said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And so until and unless we are brought to this self-denying state of self-sufficiency, we shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. And so we need to be mindful of this and, and understand that instead of looking as as, as the Pharisee did upon others in 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 in, in a distrain and and, and and down our nose that, but we should have a, a spirit of humility, understanding that we are no better and no different from anyone else, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should call upon him shall not perish but have everlasting life, that he died for all. And so since he died for all, that proved that all was dead and that we should not henceforth live unto ourselves but live for him that died for us and rose again. We find in, in, in verse 16 of uh, the 10th chapter of Mark where it states, excuse me, yes, in verse 16 in the 10th chapter of Mark it says, and he took them in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. Speaking of the children. He took them in his arms and he blessed them. Those parents or those who was in care of those children, they brought, G they brought them to the presence of Jesus so that he might bless them. And that Jesus willingly, willingly showed that his care for them by him taking them in, in his arms and embracing and blessing him. Now we understand now that, that Jesus is not physically here on earth today. But don't you know that we can take and we can present our children to God with our prayers? That 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 we can present them to him and ask him to to embrace them, ask him to bless them, ask, ask, ask our Lord Jesus to save them. We can present them to God that he might put them in his arms and bless them. We need to bring our children before the presence of the Lord. Not only, not only in our designated place of, of worship on Sundays, but we need to bring him, bring them before the presence of the Lord every day. We need to pray for 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 our family. We need to pray for our sons and daughters because we are not there at all times to watch over and to protect them. We do not have the power within ourselves to to change them, to, to, to touch their heart. But we need to take them to the one that can. And, and that one name is Jesus Christ. And so we need to do this daily. We need to be doing this daily and that, and that being open unto God, saying that, Father, I need you to watch over my child. Lord, would you just bless and keep my child, Father, that one day that you will draw him or her unto you and, and, and that they will become part of your kingdom so that they might be receptive to that eternal life. This is what we can do as parents, just as those parents did in this lesson today that they brought their children, the infants, to Christ. So let's not only just bring 
our emphasis to Christ, but let's let's bring our our whole self to Christ. That 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 we would not only bring our family, but then we as individual Christians that we will bring ourselves, that we will present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable unto Him, which is the reasonable, which is our reasonable service. After all that He done done for us, and not to be conformed to this world, but be, but 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 be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So this is what we need to do, is that we need to bring, bring, not just the infants, but, but bring our whole family unto the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you.